So I've been working on this leather handbag for one of my customers and I need to add the shoulder straps. So I thought I'd just share my process of how I do those. So the straps are going to look like, let me just grab my handbag here. So this one's my handbag here and the straps are going to look like this when they're attached. These are a little bit narrow, they're only a three quarter inch strap. Whereas on this bag, they're a one inch strap, so they're a bigger strap. So on the back of the strap, I will be putting on a metal strap end. So you can probably see there, that's what the metal strap end, so it's a decorative element. Looks really, really nice. So I'll be sharing my process of showing how I get it so that they finish and line up in the exact same process same process <laughs> in the same place as each other and your straps end up being exactly the same lengths as well so if that's something that interests you stay tuned and i'll share you my process with you one moment back again so i've got my straps already made and ready to go these straps are finished width of one inch on this side, which is the right side of the strap, they have four rows of decorative top stitching. On the back, you'll see here, this is one piece of leather that started out at two inches wide, and then I've folded the edges into the center. So this is the center here. These two rows of stitching here are not only decorative, but they're also functional as they hold the leather down through the center there. So they're approximately not quite a quarter inch apart. So I sew around about an eighth of an inch from each edge. And then I finish the edges of the strap with another row of top stitching about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. So that's the right side of the strap, depending on which way you're looking at the strap. And that's the wrong side of the strap. Either way, it looks really, really nice. Now for this leather, I'll show you a piece of the leather in its raw state. So in its raw state, this is what it looks like. Now, if I was to do a folded strap the way that I've done it there, that's how thick that strap would be. And then if I tried to then fold that over, that way you can see it's just way too thick, like really, really thick. So what I did was I cut my leather two inches wide and then we'll just pretend that this section here is a half inch here it's actually an inch but we'll just make out it's a half an inch i skived off some of the thickness of the leather so you can probably see there the difference it's quite quite a bit of a difference so with my leather skiving machine i remove some of that flesh from the back side of the leather and that makes it sort of quite smooth and quite thin and more pliable so after skiving off the half inch, I then fold that each edge over to the centre line that I had marked on there. And then that now gives me a thickness of that wide. So then when I fold that strap over, my strap then is that wide there when it's folded. So a bit of a difference compared to if I folded that full thickness with all the flesh over like you can see it's just way too stiff so that would have been the thickness and it's just it's not comfortable it's just too it's not flexible yeah so that was how i finished and prepared my shoulder straps for these straps i cut them at 27 inches long and they're one inch wide now so what i'm going to do to make sure that they are finished the same length on the handbag when I connect them to the straps is I use a little ruler and then I mark up how far I want that strap to fold over so if I want that strap when it's attached to the connector I'll put this on here so I work out how far up I would like that strap to finish I'll bring this down here so I can show you and then I've still got to put on the little metal end and I've also got to add a rivet in here. So I could go sort of whichever length I want to. 
But for the length of the finish strap that I want, I want to fold this over to there. I like this look. The strap end sits up nice and high when the bag's finished. And I like seeing that decorative element on the both sides of the leather. So I worked out that for these straps, I like to make that little mark three inches down. Because what I did is then I brought this down, rounded it up, got my little measuring ruler here on my table, measured up how far down I wanted that strap to finish. And on this one here, I've got it at three and a half inches. So if I fold that over to there, it takes me to that three and a half inch mark. So to make sure then that all my stra like straps are on this bag, I've only got two, but sometimes you might have four. So I use my little ruler, I find my three and a half inch mark, I come along, line up these lines that run along this way, along the edge of the strap, Placing this end on the three and a half inch, these lines here on that, these are on like an inch wide mark. So I've got a little guide there, make sure that's nice and straight. Then I use a marking pencil. In this case, I've used chalk. It's just a little chalk marker. It's got a very, very fine little tracing wheel. And I just place a little chalk mark where I want that strap to end. So then when I apply it to my bag, I know that's where I want them to end. So I go through and I do that on both ends on this side. And I also do it on the opposite sides. I had previously done these, but I'll come back because I've sort of touched them a bit. And sometimes that chalk can fade away. So I'll do the same again. Three and a half inch mark. Make my little mark with my chalk. And they're on there so they're ready to go so now what I need to do is add my little strap ends and I'll show you how I use my new little gadget which is the precise it's a precise electric screwdriver 28 and 1 and it's got all these little attachments and it's got its own little USB charger and this is the little screwdriver. And these are all the pieces that come with it. The size I'm going to use is this one here, which is a PH Phillips head triple zero. Because the little screws that come with the strap keepers, that's the size head of the tiny little screws. Move these out of the way there. So I've got my little screwdriver all i have to do because it's got a magnetic end is pop that in it's got a little light reverse and forward so that's ready to go now i need my strap ends the strap ends i'm using are from emmeline bags and they come in a four pack and these are the rectangle one inch rectangle strap end cap four pack in antique brass because that's the color of the hardware that i'm using now get these out so i've got four strap ends and then there's also these tiny little screws now another tip that i'll share with you for when i'm using screws like here, I've got a little screw on here. I use a little magnet of some kind, any kind of little magnet will do the job. And then I will put my little screws onto a magnet. I've got another magnet here. It's just a little sewing magnet. That's just so that they don't roll away and I lose them because they're quite easy to lose. So now they're on the little magnet they can't run away on me and I can't lose them <laughs> because believe me, I've lost them before. <laughs> when I had carpet, they're just near impossible to find again. So now what I need to do is, there's the right side, 
and that's the back side it's got the little screw holes is I need to check my strap end here make sure everything will line up now I want to place the little screw holes on the wrong side of my strap so this is the side that's got the join in so this will be the side that I will attach this to now you can just screw them on because the screws will definitely hold it like well and truly strong in place but you can also add a little bit of glue to the ends so it just depends sort of how fussy you want to be and that there but these this lever is really tough so I don't need anything extra to hold that in place now to make sure I get the holes exactly where I want them I use my awl so I'm just going to move this bag out of the way so I can position this so you can see more clearly what I'm doing move my little strap over here so on this one here that's my little screw holes and that's my strap so I'm going to slide that onto there lining that up so that it's the strap is pushed right in and it's centered because I want to make sure that this is centered on there when I've got that lined up and centered I'm trying to position my hand my fingers so you can see what I'm doing I will get my awl so oh, it's got a sharp point on the end because I'll it's like pre-drilling the hole so the screw will go in easier make sure that's lined up in the middle and I'll just use my awl and I'll poke a hole to get that started I'll generally poke it a couple of times just to give it a good good start for the screw making sure again there that it's still centered and poke that little hole in there so they're ready to go now get my little screws um, some people will put like a glue in there to secure these screws in place honestly I've never had one come out yet so I have used the glues in the past but I've just found that it's really unnecessary. Now, I'm going to get my little screw, one of these screws. Attach that there to my little screw. This screw also comes with a magnetizer, so you can magnetize the screws. Place that in there, making sure that that's all back lined up in the center. So I've got that lined up. I like to just give it a manual start just to make sure that I've got that in place. That looks pretty good. Holding on again. Come around this way for you. Push my little screws off. See they roll off. Just push them straight back on. Just gonna turn this around. So you can see that that's on that's pushed in nice and secure my little screwdriver in give it a little manual test first just to make sure I like the placement and I'm really happy with that placement I'm going to get my other screw and put that one in I'll just drop that on there the screwdriver's picked up the little screw. Just going to manually position it in just to make sure it's where I want it. And then I double check before I permanently screw those into place. They look really good. So now I like to keep this secure, hold that in there between my fingers just so that it doesn't move as I'm tightening these up. Put my little screwdriver in and screw it down and that's nice and tight and nothing has moved or shifted on me it's exactly where I want it get it nice and tight Beautiful. so you can see there those screws are in there lovely and tight 
everything's lined up beautifully and that end is on so now I'll turn around and I will do the exact same thing on the other end got my wrong side up place that over the end get it lined up nice and centered hold that in place here's my little awl make sure it doesn't shift and poke my little holes in just give it a good couple of stabs to the other side line it up and pre-start my holes if you pre-start your holes you've got less chance of threading the screws when you put them in it's nothing worse when you thread a screw and you can't get it in now I can see there's just a couple of little raw edges there on the end of that strap you can just trim them away with my scissors and I can use a lighter as another option just to, if you've got any like little pieces of the leather or threads that gives me a nice smooth finish so I've got no chance of those little frayy sort of edges peeking out the sides place that back on and I can see the little pokey holes that I've made with my awl there so they're lined up dead centre grab another screw they're really stuck on there <laughs> place it in there give that a little pre-start just to get it started grab another one making sure that's all still lined up looks good give it a little pre-start I know then that my screw is going to go in straight my straps nicely centered nothing sticking out on either side and now I can just go in and tighten those screws up oh, got a bit of a hole that one Do a little tightening. So to make sure they're well and truly down as far as they can go. And that's one strap completed. Now another thing you can do as well is sometimes straps don't always fit in the d rings after they've been put on so if i had straps that i know don't fit these ones fit i can get them in but if i've got strap ends that don't fit through the rings that i'm using here i will put the straps through then i'll lay the bag down feed that strap right through so I've got plenty of room here and then I'll attach the strap end so yeah because sometimes these keepers don't fit through the rings that are on here because like these rings the opening might not be as big as what this one here is then when I look at this now I can line up there's that chalk mark I line that up to there and just see that bit of chalk and that's where my strap will fit. Finish on that bag. And then when I stand the bag up, it'll sit up like that. Yeah, let's back a bit just so you can see. So I really like being able to see that finish on the bag. Just move this camera up so you can see. But there's my little chalk mark. And then I'll just repeat that process. For each of the straps. Now the next step that I like to do is work out where I'm going to put holes for the rivets that I'm going to be using to attach this and secure the strap. So what I like to do is I line that strap end up with that chalk mark, position that there and then work out where I'd like to put that rivet hole. And I generally like to put it sort of in the middle of where this D-ring here is. 
and where this strap end is because I've got to put my little rivet press in the middle here to squish and lock that rivet in place. Now I get my trusty little awl again with my point. Make sure these are lined up centered. So I get this nice and centered here. So I need to just look at this for a second. Everything looks straight. I know this line is straight because I drew it straight with that ruler. Got my edges nice and straight. I've stuck there. And then I will work out where I want to put that hole. So I want to place that hole. I think that there looks pretty nice. And I think that it'll bypass the little rivet press. So I'm going to push this little all right through to both sides of that strap. There's my awl poking through on the other side. I'll show you around this side here. I've got it centered. This is nice and straight. There's my chalk mark. And you can see everything is lovely and straight. I'm just trying to make sure you can see what I'm seeing. So now what I'll do is I can take that out. I lift this up first just to make sure that I can see that hole because sometimes it doesn't make the hole big enough and then I will just poke that through. Again this so I've got a nice decent size hole. So when I look through here there's my hole. On some materials if I find it hard to see I'll grab a marking pen. I'll just grab one of my... you could use a friction pen. I've got a friction pen here. This will get covered up with a rivet so I can just do a little marking around that so then I won't lose it because sometimes that leather will self-heal on that hole and you lose your hole so I find that that helps so what I can do now before I go on is I can take out this little strap I could do it while it's here on the bag but I can take this out and pre-drill my holes. Come on, yeah. Get off there. So I've got to get this one on an angle. Come out. So there's my hole there, and there's my hole there. Now I can use this one as a guide because I've got these holes marked. I'll just draw on them so that you can see. So I've got a hole there, which I'll grab something you can see a bit better. A little leather marker. There's a hole there, and there's a hole there. So I've drawn little marks around the outsides of that hole, so I can easily see them now. Now what I can do to make sure those holes are in the exact same place on the other end is I can turn this around so that they're backing each other. Line up those strap ends together. This saves you having to use a ruler. I can lay that down nice and flat. Lining them up. Edges are together. I can put my awl through that hole and then I can come through to the other side and make a little hole. I'm just going to do that again and get that hole there a little bit bigger. Lined up, put my all through, slide that up and there's the centre and I can go through and make my hole. Now I know that they are perfectly lined up. And I didn't even have to measure. I can while my awl is poking through there. Just go through and make a little mark around that hole. And now that's easy for me to find. 
So that's just one way. The other way is you can measure, get it that way, but I don't always find it's 100% accurate. Whereas this way, I find it really accurate. And now I'm just going to turn that over again. Line up those edges here. Bring these edges together so that they're sitting right. I can even hold this up now. So I'm rolling it in. Bring those together. Lining up. I can even use my marker if I don't want to poke a hole. And I can poke my marker through that hole. And now I've got a little mark where that hole needs to go. So that's where that hole will go. And then if I had my other strap ready to go, which normally I would have the other strap ready to go, um, I can just line these up again and just repeat that process using this one of these ends. Like we usually use my original one so that there's not like minor variations between each one. So I usually like to start with the first one and then I'll just get the other strap and put it on and continue with that process. Now to punch my holes, I've got a little hole punch here and I'll come from the right side, place my little hole punch over that little mark that I made and cut that out. And do the same, place that over the top, punch my hole, give it a little twist because then I know it's made the hole for me. And there's my holes. I'm not sure if you can see those holes. You can see the little white, the white through them. So they're made nice and neat. And I can come over to this one, make my hole. And that's that bit done. Now I won't do the other strap in the video. I'll show you now then how I attach the strap to the bag. So I've got my holes already done. I now need my rivets. So I've got some rivets here ready to go. I'll just keep the those I'm using. Something there, they're ready. I've got a zipper, the other little screw in there is for a zipper end that I'll be putting on the bag with the zip on the top. So now I make sure that my strap is flat. I've got the wrong side facing up at me. I can see my little chalk marks, they're fading away a little bit, but that's all right, I can see them there. So I can pop this one in, one's in, I get my screw, I like to put the rivet that's got the post on this side through the front, so I'll place that through the front there, that's come through the centre here, there, and then I'll pop it through there, push that on and beautiful, centred, everything's perfect. And then there's a little rivet cap. So it's just got like a little hole that this post sits in. Make sure that there's enough of that post poking through so that it locks in securely. And you'll hear that click in place. So that's one side done. I've still got to press it yet, but we might as well do them both while we're here. My little strap through. Bring that over. Get my rivet with the post. Come through from the front. Come through that hole. Everything's lined up beautiful. And then I can rub out those chalk marks while I'm here. Put that in. 
go like that, chalk will disappear. If it doesn't come off straight away, you can just use a little bit of a light damp cloth. In this instance, I'm just going to dampen a little bit of this leather here. Just a little bit of dampness there. And I can remove that chalk really easily. Don't need your cloth absolutely saturated, just a little bit of moisture on there. Those chalk marks are gone. And I'll put this little riblet cap on. And those two are secure there. Stand up on the front. Evenly positioned, everything's lined up in the exact same place. The strap keepers are sticking up at the same distance. Everything's nice and even there. So now I will get my rivet press, bring that over. I usually do it on the table behind me, but I thought I'll bring it over here and show you a look. So there's the rivets in the rivet dies. There's a little dent there for the right size rivet that I'm using. And this here is a little die that sits in the top. And it's got the right diameter for the rivet to sit up into there as well. So always make sure that's in there nice and tight. Secure so it doesn't move around. And this one just sits in place. It doesn't have any movement at all. Things get rusty here in our house because we're near the ocean. So now what I'll do is I'll position the strap. Whichever way is easier to work with. So I'll find whichever way is easiest. I'm just going to angle that camera down a bit there for you. So sometimes it's easier to work coming through this way. Like that might sit in there comfortably then because I need that rivet to lock in into place into that bottom section there. Make sure this is everything's lying nice and flat and secure. I hold this down, I hold the strap in. So what I'm doing is with my fingers, I'm holding that strap down so that it's nice and secure. And make sure it's nice and straight before it make sure everything's straight the strap keepers are straight looks good post is straight and then I just press down give it a good press and you'll feel it click into place that now has locked that rivet I'll do this one here coming through again turn my bag up here's the bag bump Bring this through. Oh, change angles down there so you can see what I'm doing. Coming through that way. Down there, make sure everything's lined up. Make sure these strap keepers are lined up and straight. Because once I put that rivet in, it you can't really move to line up anything. So just make sure that nothing is twisted, like the strap hasn't become sort of like off to the side like that because you don't want that sticking out the side so that's all nice it's locked in i can't move it it's secured in place everything's lined up secure that strap down make sure everything's lined up nice and straight and press and lock it in place so those straps now are well and truly anchored and secured into place. You've got no way of getting those off. Like you really have to really, really bring them apart. So very hard to do. So I'll just bring that up. So these ones are the ones that haven't been done yet. And that's the back one. Here. So there's the straps on there. Let's straighten up this camera a bit. on there lovely and side view so this is what you'd see from that side and then if the straps drop down you've got a beautiful decorative feature there in the straps looks really classy love that so yeah this has got a magnetic clasp 
got the rivets going all the way through the rivets and this is the one where I've done my label and my branding just really really subtle and it's got a matching bristlet as well so that's that little set absolutely beautiful oh, I love it beautiful this is the same leather but just the real side of the leather gorgeous so yeah you want a little peek inside you want to see what it looks like oh it's so nice it's got animal print and this is like a faux suede and it's got the credit card slots in the leather and that's just beautiful and then inside the bag and inside faux suede absolutely beautiful in the animal print and we've got the glasses pockets and we've got the slip pockets and the zip pocket and just in the neutral colours I love having a neutral pocket in there and it contrasting like coordinating contrasting so absolutely gorgeous how nice is that <laughs> beautiful bag can open it right up love this one show you a look it's the bag base it's got the first feet and I've still got to put the little zipper end on so I could do the little zipper in because I need to do that now so I might as well do that now What I like to do, I'll just put the camera down again, is I lay out my bag so it's all nice and flat there. Then I can see how much tail I've got. And then what I'll do, is move up here, is I think I've got this. This has got a couple of stitches so that the zipper pull, the zipper can't come off the end there while I was sewing it. So I can decide what's comfortable for that bag to be opened right up and allow for a zipper pull plus the zipper head. So there's my little zipper pull. Get my little bag of hardware here. So my zipper pull is that long. So in the zip I push it right in. So that's gonna sit about there, and the zip about there, and that's actually quite a comfortable length. So I might, so that's where the zipper will sit when it's fully opened. If I push this too closed up, so if I just put my thumb there and close that up, it can sort of strain, so I need to make sure that there's enough there. So I can cut a little bit off of that, which I might do. So that's my zipper pull, lay that to the side there. So I could cut off a little bit of this tape, which I will do. I've got one pair of scissors that I use for my zippers and zipper tape. This little bit off once I cut it off, I can't put it back on. So that's cut off. So that's how much I cut off there. Get rid of that. Now I'll use my lighter and I'll melt the ends here of the zipper tape so it doesn't continue to fray. So that there is done. Now Keep this down so you can see what I'm doing. I can glue these little ends because I need to fold them over. Now I work out which side is the front of my bag and this is the front. I like this tape to fold towards the back and the back bit of the zipper tape I like it to fold towards the front first and then overlap the front 
over the back part of the zipper tape. I just, for some reason, I just, I'm consistent and I just like it to go that way. And I can put those like that. You can glue these together as well. Sometimes I might glue them and then sometimes I might use some tape. But I'm just going to check. See, I'm happy with that. Holding that back in again. Put that back over. So that's sitting pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. Put that zipper into there. Sometimes this is where it can be easier to have it pre glued. No, I'm good. And I'm just pushing that zipper tape right down into that zipper head. Sorry if I didn't see that. Right. And then to just make sure it's in there as far as it can go, I like to use my awl and I'll hold the end of the zipper pull and I'll just position the awl between those teeth and just see if I can push it in further. I think I've got that in there as far as that can go. There's no, nowhere, no more room. So that zipper tape is now all the way down to the bottom. So it's not going anywhere. Now I like to turn this over, just check the back, make sure the tape is sitting there nice. So looking pretty good. If I find I've got any like sort of puckering or anything, I can use that all and I can poke that zipper tape down into there a little bit further. There's no no give no 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 room for movement in there. She's on there nice and secure. So now what I need to do is grab that little screw. And my screwdriver is my little baby, tiny, tiny, it's a tiny little screw, look at that, hence for the magnet. <laughs> so what I can do there as well, again there, I like to use my awl and I pre-poke a little hole just to get that started through that zipper tape, poke through Give it a good chance for the screw to go in without stripping the screw. You can add a little drop of glue in there if you wanted to. But again, there, this screw will hook into those teeth and it's not going to go anywhere. Now, I might just um, get my little magnetizer tool just to make sure that I don't lose this little screw. dish there so this will magnetize this because that's the magnetizing end and I've got that little screw I'll just put it right onto the end so it's sitting right on the end you can see how tiny it is it's such a tiny little screw so I'll put that in and again there I like to manually get it started just so I know that it's in there straight and I've got no chance of threading it. I don't give you any spare screws with these. That's looking good. I can feel it gripping now on the teeth so I've got grip on there. And now I'll just put that screw in, the screwdriver, and it's in there. And that is locked in. These thread really easy. So I find if I push that right in and then I thread that, it ain't coming out. It's in there lovely and flat, nice and secure. Beautiful. She's got no way of coming out now. She ain't coming out. So that's that. Okay, I think. Just lift that camera back up again there for you. So there's our zipper pull on. Close that up. And it's to 
sticking out. There, so if that's sitting in place, that's how far that's sitting out. It's enough to be able to grab it, poke it in so it doesn't stick out. And there it is. It's to open up my bag all the way, full access, with not too much dangling away. So if I wanted to leave it out, and just hold that and pull that closed. There we go. I think that's long enough for the video. <laughs> As you can see, I, I do take a lot of care, a lot of pride in making sure that everything's as precise as I can make it on my bags. So that's the sort of quality that you get when you buy a bag from me. Got my camera nice and crooked there, haven't I? <laughs> okay. Hello. If you've stayed through to the end, I hope you've enjoyed the video and a thorough detailed overview on how I sort of add my straps and as a little bonus doing the zipper pull here as well. So I just, I just love these bags. So this is my own design, my own style. Everything is made here by me. Uh, I just love this. Those straps are beautiful. Lovely. And there was the back. So you can see everything's like sitting exactly the same. And then it drops down. Looks beautiful. Everything's nice and precise. Hey, that's all. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. <laughs> Did you think there was that much involved adding a strap? <laughs> you can do them much faster and much quicker, but I enjoy taking my time and just making sure everything's finished beautifully. Can't help myself. <laughs> Definitely not a speed, speed demon. <laughs> Bye.